real messy. All right, so we have ferric chloride and sodium hydroxide in these two buckets. Hey, hey. Dawson's putting on his gloves, take some samples. He already has some ferric chloride in this beaker. And we'll just use the weigh boat and get it measured out. Tearing it out, all right. This is riveting. So have you gotten good at figuring out, just I think estimating I, it? I think I figured out a little pattern. What's the, what's the mass that you're shooting for? 17.5 grams for the ferric chloride. 17.5 grams. Ooh, Lord. 19.5 in this case. Well, we're gonna assume that he's gonna get that sorted out. We have the idea now, though. And there we go, 17.5. I'd call that 17.5. Close enough for barrel work, for sure. All right. Now we're gonna switch to the sodium hydroxide. Okay. I'm going for 12.9, so we get that. 12.9, so almost there. Almost All right, there. a few more tablets, and we'll be good. So, to give you a picture of what it looks like at the top, Ooh, there's our there's our boiling water. It's not boiling; it's just being aerated and pumped. So he grabs some of that. Ooh, and there's those guys taking the samples. Take a look at this stuff too. This is where we mix the water, the water up. We're adding uh, ferric chloride and sodium hydroxide to get our flux in this barrel. And then we transfer it from this barrel to this one through this pipe right here because there's a sump pump down at the bottom of that. So we transfer to this barrel. Then there's another pump at the bottom of this one that sends the water up through this white pipe to the top and then it flows back down that drain down here. And so this is continuously being recirculated so that the feed level at the top always stays the same. Now at the very beginning of the experiment, the water is clear, but we have flock that's beginning to come down. We just started the flow rate, and we just started the flow. And now here comes the flock. We'll go down through the column. And three. All right, the water is going through the column, and you can see kind of how fast the water goes down. And the flocks are going down there too. There's the column, all the way up, and folks working on the chemicals up there. We even have the sand and the anthracite. When the water comes out through this hose down to there. This is where we sample the effluent right here. And we're sampling ports three coming out toward the bottom of the media filter and the sample three port comes out right there and then we're sampling port six sort of at the bottom of the anthracite part and that comes out right here in this port measure oh wait yeah to measure the feed turbidity all we're doing is reaching into the top of the tank and collecting a sample. Oh yeah, there we go. Cool. It's sample time. Everybody's lining up to take their sample. Right here we've got number six. Wow, number six is really just trickling out, isn't it? Mm. 
Can we increase the flow rate at all? Oh, hey, yeah, there we go. But were you deliberately keeping it at a trickle? All right. Here we go, here we go, taking sample number three. Also trickling. All right, let's bump it up a little bit if we can. There we go, increasing our sampling rate. Number three, we can see it's got some color to it. The three's near the bottom, so we don't have too much coming out quite yet. All right, one more. Now we're gonna take our effluent sample. That's how we're measuring turbidity of the effluent. All right, for measuring turbidity, we just insert the vial into the turbidity meter. What's our time point right now? Like 80 minutes. 80 minutes and we're getting a 5.3 reading. On which sample is this? The effluent. That's the effluent sample. All right, so 5.3 on the effluent sample. And there's our plot. Ooh, the coal sand interface really jumped up that time, huh? Probably yeah. because of the way <laughs> I was messing with the sampling port. That's okay. It works. <laughs> and then do that again. Show us how you measure the, uh, the piezometer reading. You're just taking a picture of where the piezometers are located. And what we're talking about is here, like these water levels, is recording where the water levels are for each of the piezometers. And notice that it starts low and goes high. That's because this one is connected to the bottom of the, the fan column, and these are connected to the top, so the head loss goes from top to bottom. And then she's entering them into her computer right here. And we got a nice graph started showing the head loss. And Allison is working on homework. Go ahead and open the backwash valve a little more. There we go, there we go. So we see the stuff is starting to come back up. And we're backwashing the filter. Now what we want to do is fluidize the bed. So increase the backwash velocity more. Open that valve further. Good. All right, hold up right there. We don't want to overdo it though. That looks pretty good. So, following this fast wash. Oh man, we collected a bunch of gunk during this run. Down here, we see it's trying to fluidize. The sand is pretty much fluidized. Now, it's just got to break through and fluidize the anthracite coal in there. help it a little bit. There we go. Well, maybe not. <laughs> we'll tap it a little more. Oh, there it goes. It's breaking. Now it's pulled eyes. Okay. And so in a normal backwash, well, this is a backwash, right? We are backwashing the column. But uh, you would normally keep it going for, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then you have the air scouring steps and stuff too. All right, so we can see the, the material climbing out of the column, headed toward the, the lagoon or the thickener, whatever they have to deal with sludge in the plant. Here at the interface, you can see a little bit of mixing going on, but the coal stays at the top because of the lower density. And we're starting to get some clarity now. Cool.